Hello and welcome to In Stitches. This is part two in a two part series where I go through and replace the feed gears on this Singer sewing machine and this video pertains to other Singer sewing machines that are similar in their setup to this machine. In the previous video I showed how to replace uh, the actual gears themselves, it didn't go through the timing of the gears. So this video covers the timing of the gears and you may have also noticed in the previous video that I said that the hook timing needs to be set before the feed timing. That's not true, I don't know why I said that, uh, but the feed timing is independent of the hook timing. The feed timing is actually related to the needle bar timing as such and the hook timing is also related to the needle bar timing. So they can be set independently. So this video will show the timing of the uh, feed gears and then I'll do another video which will come probably straight after this one to show you how to set the hook timing because that gets upset when you, as soon as you undo the screws to replace the feed gears. So the hook timing needs to be reset as well. So keep an eye out for that video coming up later. Let's carry on from where we left off in part one and I'll show you how to get these feed gears timed. I bring this gear in and that went on to, so it's one screw, one grub screw here, went onto a flat on the shaft, so just put that into position. If you want to see where the flat surface is, when you put the shaft in you can take that grub screw out temporarily and then push the shaft there we go and then we basically just bring the shaft up flush with the with this end of the pulley here that the shaft lateral uh, position is you know it's it doesn't need to be super super accurate just within within Kiwi there and we've got the flat there on the shaft and we've got the first We've turned the machine in the direction of rotation, which on a machine like this is always turn the top of the hand wheel towards you. And we'll get the first screw onto the flat surface there. So that screw there. Just bring that in flush around about there. Tighten that screw there. We can torque that screw up and the other grub screw as well. Okay, one, two, there. Okay, let's just bring the collar up. And that goes onto a flat surface just here. That collar. And we should just have a small amount of lateral movement there. You can judge it. You could use a feeler gauge. Put a feeler gauge down in, in between here. Uh, just to give you that you know, very, there's a small amount of clearance there. You can do it by feel. If you don't have feeler gauges, it's no problem. Tiny little bit of clearance there, that's probably a little bit too much. There's a tiny, tiny little bit of clearance, I can just hear it. You can, you just get that by feel really. As long as there's a tiny, tiny little bit of clearance there, that should be fine. Now, let's get the screw in on the flat on this here. Let's get our screw in there. So the flat surface is, the screw is going to tighten on the flat surface there. And you want a very small amount of backlash in this gear here. And you can see that if you take the gear to the right, this gear, on the horizontal shaft to the right, you'll see there's a lot of backlash there. If I go back, I mean that's way too much, right? So you want to bring this gear here and to the right, uh, to the left, sorry, so that there's minimal backlash. So you don't want that to be tight on that gear there. And then you tighten this screw here, right, and check your backlash. Have a look here, we can see that we've still got no drive, and that's because this gear is loose still and it's not engaged with this gear here. This is the feed drive. Right, so pretty much just bring, slide that gear across. Screw was on a flat, so I've just got the, I've got the grub screw out at the moment. And you might be able to see there where the flat 
is through the hole there. So just line up, line up the flat there. Now, as far as the lateral adjustment of that, obviously it needs to be on the flat there. Uh, but that doesn't really matter too much. You could, as long as the scrub screws, you know, I would say roughly in the middle of its flat there, that that's about right. It doesn't matter too much because the timing is going to be done on this gear here. Right, so do that one up. We should be able to turn this here independently, right? Because this screw's loose. So uh, the the easy way, <laughs> I've seen it uh, done the hard way. Uh, so I'll bring the machine, turn the machine in operating direction until the needle bar is, is at its bottom dead center. Then bring this mark up to this mark here. Whilst holding the machine, make sure the machine doesn't turn while you're doing that. And then get rid of that back lash there. Then get, make sure that end play is gone. And I should be able to uh, do that screw there up. Just like that there. And that is your feed timing done. So you just need to uh, double check it from there. But it looks pretty good. Okay, so let's uh, double check that again. Make sure your machine's on the longest stitch length. So we're at six stitches per inch there. Feed dogs are starting to come up here now. Feeding. And now they're just coming down, ready to go under the plate. And that's it. That's perfect. So that's, you know, there's no need to adjust that at all. That's, that's spot on. Uh, if that's not right, well, yeah, you may need to um, adjust that uh, feed timing just slightly. So that's it for this one. Keep an eye out for the hook timing video coming very soon. I'd like to put out a special thank you to my new patron on Patreon, Bobbin and Inc. Thank you very much for coming aboard. And as always, thank you very much to my patrons on Patreon. Your contributions are greatly appreciated. And of course, thank you all very much for watching.